everyone. Welcome to episode two, segment two of Hidden Gems. I'm Jacqueline, covalence evangelist for all things product and community. In today's segment, we're going to be talking about blockchains, specifically comparing Arbitrum and Optimism. But with me is David, who's also on our team, but would love for you to say hello um, and introduce yourself and talk about a little bit on what your role is at Covalent. Awesome. I'm super excited to be joining the podcast today. Uh, as Jackie mentioned, my name is David and my role at Covalent here is uh, quite multifaceted. I work on all things um, growth, um, customer success and our ecosystem at Covalent. So what that kind of means is I help drive initiatives that are um, revenue generating um, related to growth and also churn reducing um, for customer su su success um, with our blockchain partners. And um, additionally, sometimes I write um, on-chain traction analysis and also data-driven research papers um, on the blockchains that Covalent supports. Yeah, and the awesome thing is, is that the research papers that David has written has gotten really good traction. Um, you'll see that we've shared some of them on Twitter, but for the most recent one that you did on Arbitrum and Optimism, would you be able to elaborate a little bit on the research paper you wrote on them? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess I'll first uh, give a quick intro to the Arbitrum and Optimism ecosystems, and then I can talk a little bit about the research paper and um, what it consists of. Um, but essentially, Arbitrum and Optimism, they are the two leading layer two solutions um, that use optimistic rollups to scale Ethereum. And, you know, they make up a huge chunks of um, Ethereum's overall attraction. And uh, both these ecosystems, they share the goal of making Ethereum more usable and also more affordable. And they have a lot of unique stuff that sets them apart. But essentially, Covalent has been supporting both Arbitrum and Optimism since early 2022. And we've also indexed um, every single block, smart contract, event, and transaction on these two chains um, since their genesis. So with all this index data, um, we have our unified API, which is our flagship product that allows developers to kind of reuse queries um, across the two networks and also for analysts like myself to kind of find insights. Um, so using Covalence data, um, I recently wrote a research paper doing an in-depth comparison of Arbitrum and Optimism and their ecosystems. And it covers kind of a wide range of topics, including their on-chain metrics, um, like transactions and active addresses, um, ecosystem de developments, um, such as Arbitrum Nova and Base, their new kind of chains, and also their growth outlook um, for the rest of the year. So I'm super excited and happy today to kind of discuss more of some of the findings um, from the research paper on the two optimistic rollups on uh, today's podcast. So before we go into the optimistic rollups like Arbitrum and um, Optimism that you were mentioning, there might be people who aren't really familiar on Ethereum layer two rollups. Would you be able to explain that a little bit more? Yeah, so um, right now Ethereum has um, low throughput and high gas fees, and that essentially limits its scalability and also user experience. So as a solution to this problem, there are layer two rollups and what they do is they kind of batch and process um, hundreds of transactions and then they publish a compressed version of it um, back to Ethereum's layer one in a single mainnet block. So what these layer two rollups do is they enable higher throughput and it also reduces the gas fees um, on Ethereum by compressing all of these transactions into one. So I, I personally like to think of rollups like um, employees, they receive multiple tasks, um, they process them, and then they submit a single report back to their boss, which is Ethereum. And they play a really crucial role uh, in Ethereum's roadmap. Um, rollups kind of come in two forms. So there's zero knowledge rollups, and then there's also optimistic rollups. Um, happy to dive deeper into optim optimistic rollups if you'd like. Yeah, would you be able to go into the optimistic rollups like Arbitrum and Optimism then? Yeah, for sure. Um, so Arbitrum and Optimism, they're optimistic rollups and essentially optimistic rollups uh, assume that these bundled transactions um, that are published uh, back to Ethereum's layer one are uh, valid by default. So that's why they're called optimistic. Um, these optimistic rollups, they use fraud proofs um, to prove validity for a transaction only if it's disputed uh, during a seven day challenge window. But once that window kind of closes, these transactions are finalized on chain. Um, on the other hand, uh, there are ZK rollups, which is the contrast to optimistic rollups, I guess. Um, they prove validity of every single transaction using validity proofs 
um, every time. So unlike optimistic rollups who assumes that um, kind of it's valid and it only proves it when it's disputed, ZK rollups prove it every time um, using uh, maths and cryptography. So um, you could say that optimistic rollups are a little bit more efficient and they use less computing power. And currently the two optimistic rollups, Arbitrum and Optimism, they offer around three times the, fru the throughput of Ethereum while only charging a fraction of the gas fee. So that kind of highlights their benefits uh, to scaling Ethereum overall and also to users like uh, me and you. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I know you mentioned on-chain activity too. How do Arbitrum and Optimism compare? Yeah, um, so overall, I would say that both optimistic rollups are experiencing super, super healthy growth. And over the past year, they've been neck and neck uh, for this on-chain activity. And a good measure of on-chain activity usually is looking at daily transactions and also active users. So let's take a look at some of these charts that are powered by Covalent. And as we can see, both these metrics for Arbitrum and Optimism are up and to the right, which is always a great sign. And there are a couple of few events um, that have kind of caused their growth. So from the chart, we can see that in May 2022, um, there was a big spike in transactions and users for Optimism. And that's because they launched their governance token, um, OP. And in June 20, uh, on June 21st in 2022, um, Arbitrum kind of had higher transactions and users as well. And this was because they began their uh, NFT incentive program called Arbitrum Odyssey. So essentially it was a program that um, gave users quests and different journeys and milestones. And once they completed it, they would receive a reward. So that kind of incentivized users to interact with the ecosystem more. And um, some other events that kind of drove these um, daily transactions and active addresses was on September 20th in 2022, Optimism kind of adopted a similar strategy to Arbitrum's um, Odyssey. So they launched their own NFT incentive program actually called Optimism Quests, which also resulted in an increase in transactions and users. And then that program ended in January 17th. And as we can see here, um, Optimism kind of experienced a drop in transactions and users after the end of the program. But ever since then, it's been growing steadily um, because of its new scaling roadmap, which I'll touch, touch on a little bit later, and also its partnerships. Um, Arbitrum's transactions overall and users began to increase after August 31st. Um, this is mainly due to the fact of their Nitro stack upgrade, um, which kind of increased their throughput um, by 10x while also further reducing gas fees. And in this year, 2023, um, Arbitrum has just been absolutely ripping. So they've surpassed Ethereum's daily transactions in February 21st, um, thanks to you know multiple DEXs, lending protocols, and deriv derivatives um, introduced to the ecosystem. And as we can see here in March 16th again, their daily transactions once again surpassed Ethereum's after the announcement of their ARB governance token. And you know since then it's held steady uh, past the one million mark of transactions. And it's currently facilitating more transactions in Ethereum, which is a huge, huge accomplishment for the Arbitrum ecosystem. Um, so that's mainly um, some of the activities and key events that led to their growth. And if we just kind of look at the active users chart, um, we can see that Arbitrum has kind of had more daily active addresses than Optimism throughout the past year. And the reason behind this is mainly because that um, Arbitrum, they kind of had an early advantage in terms of user adoption when they launched back in August 2021. Um, it was an open launch, so anyone could go on it and develop on it and use it. Um, Optimism, on the other hand, they launched early in January, but they had a whitelist. So that kind of limited the projects that could be deployed on the chain and users that could interact it, on it until December. So Arbitrum kind of got an early lead in terms of users. Um, but all in all, despite all the turbulent events of 2022, um, our data kind of shows that both these ecosystems, they've not only demonstrated a lot of resilience, but also they've shown incredible growth in activity and also usage. Wow, that's, that's awesome information, including the charts that you were able to show. It's different when you talk about it versus showing <laughs> the actual data. Yeah. Um, I know, easier to then tell. <laughs> yeah, um, I know that Covalent recently integrated with Arbitrum Nova. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and the integration? Yeah, for sure. Um, so Covalent, we have been supporting Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum 1 essentially is Arbitrum's primary network um, for DeFi and also NFT projects. Um, but we re recently also integrated with Arbitrum Nova too. 
And Arbitrum Nova is designed to kind of streamline um, high volume transactions for gaming and social dApps. So the way Arbitrum Nova works is that it's a new rollup completely built on Arbitrum's antitrust technology. And that essentially enables even lower gas fees than Arbitrum 1, uh, which can be seen on the chart right here. We compare uh, we compared Arbitrum 1's um, gas fees with Arbitrum Nova's, and Arbitrum Nova's is significantly lower, um, which kind of validates uh, its thesis. So this makes Arbitrum Nova great for GameFi projects um, that frequently mint new NFTs, or also decentralized social networks that kind of require uh, many on-chain interactions between users. So um, one thing that we've been seeing in the Arbitrum and Optimism ecosystems is that there's been a lot of DeFi activity, a lot of NFT activity, but there has really been like limited adoption in gaming and social dApps mm. uh, compared to many alternative layer ones, such as Avalanche, um, Phantom, let's say. So it's hoped that um, this new Nova chain will boost gaming and social development in the Arbitrum ecosystem. And, you know, by partnering with Kvalent um, and with our help, uh, we can improve data availability on Arbitrum Nova for the developers. So a good first success story for the Nova chain is kind of the migration of Reddit's uh, community point system, actually, mm -hmm. um, to Arbitrum Nova. So it's already seeing really, really good adoption and really good traction as well. Okay. Well, I'm learning a lot from you. <laughs> this is great. I need to read more of your research papers. Um, how is Covalent supporting um, BASE? And what role does BASE play in the broader crypto ecosystem? Yeah, so um, BASE is super, super exciting. Um, because their Coinbase is layer two solution. And they're also built on Optimism's open source uh, OP stack. And BASE essentially, they chose Kvalent as a launch partner to empower developers in their ecosystem with um, rich on-chain data. Uh, I think BASE is pretty awesome because it's a natural extension of Coinbase's um, existing products, such as their um, staking solutions, custody solutions, wallet, and a lot more. And what's super interesting now is that uh, Coinbase actually became the second core developer and contributor to the OP stack code base. So right now, um, Optimism's develop speeds, uh, development speeds is going to be like turbocharged because there's two really competent teams um, working and cooperating on the same stack. So um, as our data here shows, um, the base test net, um, which is the one we've integrated and indexed, is already seeing super, super impressive traction in terms of transactions and active addresses. Um, so as a testnet, it shows that a lot of developers and users are already engaging with it. And um, with Base and Coinbase's partnership with Optimism, um, I think this has given the Optimism ecosystem a shot in the arm and a huge boost because Coinbase currently has 110 million verified users and all of these users could potentially onboard to the OP stack and the Optimism ecosystem. So this positions uh, Optimism very, very strongly for future growth. And we're super lucky at Kvalent to be a part of that growth as well, and also to support Arbitrum Nova and the Arbitrum e ecosystem as well, like I mentioned earlier. All right. So the next two questions are more of personal questions I have for you on your opinion. Um, based on your expertise, what are some of the most exciting developments that you see on the horizon for the Arbitrum ecosystem? Um, so the most exciting developments that I see on the horizon uh, would definitely be Arbitrum Orbit for Arbitrum. So Arbitrum recently, they made a big announcement about their latest offer, offering, which is uh, Arbitrum Orbit, like I mentioned. Um, Arbitrum Orbit is essentially a permissionless framework that enables developers to build layer three chains on Arbitrum itself. So Arbitrum itself is a layer two on top of Ethereum, but with Orbit, if uh, developers can build layer threes on top of the layer two, uh, it can get a Kind of a lot to understand, but um, essentially this will enable um, you know more scalability, new execution environments, and also new use cases um, such as order book exchanges or games. And um, with Orbit, developers can utilize you know the full suite of Arbitrum's existing technology and tailor it further to their specific requirements. So I think Arbitrum Orbit will likely turn Arbitrum One into a settlement layer, kind of like Ethereum. And it'll also allow its entire ecosystem to scale uh, more smoothly over the long run. And this development, I think, will definitely create uh, a lot of new opportunities for growth within Arbitrum and also draw a lot more attention to it. So it's going to be super interesting to see these layer freeze in action 
and also observe kind of the impact that they'll have. Okay, those are exciting developments. Got me all pumped. <laughs> uh, so I know you just covered um, what's exciting for the Arbitrum ecosystem. Are you able to share what you're most excited for the Optimism ecosystem? Yeah, definitely. Um, so for the Optimism ecosystem, um, what's super exciting is that Optimism and Coinbase, um, they're working together towards a vision for what they call a super chain. So essentially a super chain uh, is something that they want to do and they want to unite all the different layer twos that are building using uh, the open source OP stack and they want to unite them under a single network. So essentially this makes Optimism a platform um, for layer two blockchains. So this is exciting because it kind of has the potential to further strengthen the network effects that Optimism already has from its current ecosystem, but also draw new, in new contributors and new communities um, such as Coinbase and also Covalent. So Covalent has a super uh, interesting role to play in the super chain thesis as well, because the way we index blockchain data is standardized and it's also truly, truly interoperable. So it's going to benefit a lot of developers accessing the super chain data and also speed up the development of the super chain itself. Mm. So in the short term, um, the super chain will unify Coinbase's base, uh, Metis, Boba, which all are supported by Covalent to form an initial super chain structure. And this super chain structure features um, shared bridges and also sequencing. But in the long term, this super chain would essentially become a vibrant ecosystem of a bunch of layer two networks that are built on top of the OP stack and it will maximize interoperability and it will share decentralized protocols and also standardize all of its core primitives. So it's very exciting to be a part of this um, as Covalent. Okay. And as Ethereum continues to evolve, well, I guess two in one question, what do you think the future holds for both Arbitrum and Optimism and how will they continue to impact the broader blockchain landscape? Uh, that's a great question. So I think um, Arbitrum and Optimism have both made um, super significant strides as layer two rollups, and they'll continue to do so and play an important role in Ethereum's modular future. So for Arbitrum, I think their launch of Nova and Orbit demonstrates um, their commitment to innovation. And also, even though they recently just launched ARB, their governance token, and it's uh, later launched an OP, which is Optimism's governance token, Arbitrum currently holds kind of an advantage as a second mover, and they can learn from Optimism's kind of successes and failures regarding the token design, um, different growth initiatives, and also governance processes. So for Optimism, they've been cementing their moat um, in the ecosystem by sticking to their principles of being open source, um, decentralized, and have community at their center. So uh, I think with Base as well being built on the OP stack, it's a huge leap forward for Optimism. And if the OP stack can become the standardized framework for developing layer twos, um, Optimism will benefit uh, tremendously from this and also from the composability between all the different uh, rollups under its super chain. So I think moving forward, um, both the Arbitrum and Optimism ecosystems, um, they're gonna grow, they're, con they're gonna continue to build on their strong foundations. And as they continue to uh, go on their trajectories, it's gonna lead to overall a better user experience for everyone in Web3 and also advance our entire industry forward. Okay, <laughs> David, for those of you who haven't met David or wanna say hello, please feel free to do that in the comment section. If you enjoyed um, a little bit of this analysis that David has gone through, there is that research paper that we mentioned in the beginning that he has written. We'll include that in the description below so you can take the time to read through it or also follow our Twitter where we'll be posting um, more research papers. You can also reach out to David if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so if you enjoyed this segment on blockchains, please um, like and subscribe this video. It'll just keep you up to date on what future videos we'll be releasing every week. We'll be covering different themes. There will be different segments, different speakers, and a lot of expertise from either our team or um, other guests that we'll have. But as always, have an amazing day and we'll catch you on the next segment or episode. Thanks so much, David, for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jackie. Bye, everyone. Yeah.